It was just an amazing challenge. Tenali lived up to everything it was. It threw everything at us. On May 30th, Jeff Glassbrenner accomplished what few have. The West Little Rock Mountaineer and below the knee amputee reached the summit of Denali, which stands at 20,310 feet above sea level. From start to finish, it took him 22 days. He was pushed to the limit physically, mentally, and spiritually. And with only four days of food and fuel left, he and his teammates almost had to call it quits. On May 11th, Jeff Glassbrenner and his teammates board a ski plane. 17 to the summit, 90% chance of snow. With a low around minus 30. And reach the base of Denali, 7,000 feet above sea level. We've got the most amazing views coming in. And, you know, it was just kind of a time to think, all right, it's, it's go time. You know, all the training, all the preparation, you know, is coming down to this moment. The team spends two days at base camp prepping their equipment, sleds, ropes, food, and fuel. The next day we started heading up that mountain, and that's when it kind of, you know, it became real. On average, the team will climb five hours a day. They start out carrying a 60-pound backpack and pulling a sled loaded with 60 pounds of equipment and food. The next elevation was uh, only 900 feet up, but it took us, you know, three hours to get there because um, uh, it's, it's a lot of hard work just moving that, uh, those heavy loads. On day four, they reach 11,000 feet. Strong winds are in the forecast, so they immediately create an ice wall around their camp. Just to protect our tents and, and our equipment from the, the winds that we were getting every night. Poor weather forces them to stay at 11,000 feet for three straight days. With yet another storm brewing, they make a critical decision to try and reach 14,000 feet. The wind was going so much that we're pulling these sleds and about 30 or 40 pounds in the back of it at this time, and the sleds are lifting up off the ground. And so it was uh, it was crazy. It was one of those moments you're like, oh, should we be doing this? When the team reaches 17,000 feet, things would only get worse. And this time there was nothing they could do to prepare them for what happened. All of a sudden we look at the corner of our eye and we saw a, a climber fall about 1,300 feet. 31-year-old Adam Roski of British Columbia was on his way down when in 18,200 feet, he tumbled more than 1,000 feet. It's something I'll never, ever forget. The National Park Service saying in a statement, he was unresponsive due to multiple traumatic injuries. The hardest part for me personally is watching that guy fall and knowing a few days later I'd have to be on that same mountain making those same steps that he did. With another major storm heading their way, Glassbrenner and his team refocus, shifting their attention to building yet another ice wall. The job finished right before 60 to 70 mile an hour winds blast their camp and temps drop to 35 below. For six days, the weather pounds their tents and campsite. The physical and mental toll all captured in a series of selfies. Other teams retreat, but Glassbrenner and his team ride it out. With just four days of food left, the sky's clear. It's go time. There is no room for air. One wrong step, as you can see, can be disastrous. Eight hours after leaving the 17,000-foot camp, the team finally reaches the summit. And to have that mountain all to ourselves and just to, just to be there, not, not too many people have done that. There are no cheering fans waiting for them or medals to be handed out at the summit. Just a geological poll from the U.S. Department of Interior. But what I do get is I get the most amazing views that you've ever seen. A reward that only a few can say they've experienced firsthand. I always say like the harder the challenge, the better the views. And this was a huge challenge and a huge, huge view. Mm. A breathtaking view at that. Now, getting down was no easy task either. In fact, they felt a 6.1 earthquake. Glassbrenner telling me he felt the glacier tremble and feared it would cause a snow slide or avalanche. Fortunately, that didn't happen. So what's next for him? Well, he's now one step closer to conquering what's called the Explorer's Grand Slam, a grueling adventure that only 49 people in the world have ever accomplished. It involves scaling the seven highest mountains on all seven continents and reaching both the South and North Pole. As you can see here on this map, highlighted in yellow, that's all that Jeff has left to do. 
He has to get to the North Pole, which he will try in April of next year, and then reach the summit of Karsten's Pyramid, which he plans on climbing next month. And when he does, Donna, both of those, he will become the first ever physically challenged athlete in the world to have completed the Explorer's Grand Slam. Now, what he does after that, <laughs> uh, that's really it, it, anyone's guess. What's left right? after that? Yeah. I mean, come on, what's <laughs> left? He's amazing. He is absolutely yeah. amazing. But I do know he took a little piece of Fox 16 with him to the top of Denali. Yeah, you could say Fox 16 has been to the top of Denali. You could say <laughs> Yay, that. Take a look us. at this. Now, before he left, I gave him a Fox 16 flag and asked him if he could take it to the summit. I wasn't sure if he'd remember, but sure enough, based on that photo, he came through, and what a great photo it is. And here's the flag that he took. And as you can see, Jeff was kind enough to sign it. He's up here at the top on this side, over here, right below my finger there. And then the rest of us here at the Fox 16 family, we signed it as well. We plan on presenting it to him when he gets back in town because right now he's relaxing and enjoying a little bit of R&R &R &R. before he has to get ready for his next adventure. Yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> he is absolutely amazing. And we here at Fox 16, we love him. Yeah, we certainly he's do. He's a good guy. Yeah.